So let's start off with uh, some of the cable shows that we probably got coming up this year. Uh, obviously, with FX, we've got Atlanta and Snowfall. Yeah, man, I have to binge the last season of Atlanta. So I, I'm, I'm not current. That's probably the only show in the entire show universe that you are more current on me then. Well, here's the thing. So since 2022 is the start of all these shows starting to come back into play, like Ozark mm-hmm. and, and, yeah, and yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. obviously Snowfall and all those other shows, there's going to be a lot of binging that people are going to have to do to catch up to some of these shows. So I myself am going to have to watch Atlanta's last season and even catch yeah, up. Yeah, I was going to say, yo, I'm definitely going to have to binge the last season of Atlanta. Now, Snowfall? <laughs> did you see the trailer uh, finally? Uh, yes, I did. I did. <laughs> I did. No Alden, but 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 Sissy. Mm-hmm. So how did that work out? Yeah, no, it's it's definitely building up to be something, especially with the whole time lapse thing that they're doing. So it'll be interesting to see what they do with that. And I'm 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 here for it. Snowfall is probably one of the best shows out right now. So definitely can't slack on that at all. The other cable channel that's been pumping out a lot of heat stars is probably going to obviously give us the uh the tommy power book four force uh and then obviously we've got the new season of that was a tongue twister i know power book four force force with tommy there you go Mm -hmm. he's going to be in chicago so that's going to be an exciting season that is probably going to be my favorite power spinoff i'm I'm going to be interested to see how uh how ghost season two wraps up because I think that's going to give us a little bit of insight into not only what Tommy's been doing this whole time, but where he's going next, depending on how Tariq ends up. Because if you locked up, you for damn for sure can't protect Tasha. Yeah, I, I actually do think Tasha's going to pop up in, in Force. If, if, if any book outside of Ghost, it would be Force, obviously, right? Yeah. Because Tommy has a, has a blood feud out for Tasha right now. So definitely going to be my, my favorite power spinoff for sure. I think this is the most compelling character or the most compelling holdover from the original power universe that's still there, right? Easily. Like, all right, yeah, you know, Davis and or Davis wasn't there. Um, uh, Tate, Tate, and and goddamn Sacks, and it's just like the connective tissue to power has has been has been lacking, right? The 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 other than Tariq. There really is no, there's not a whole lot of connective tissue, at least in the second season, back to the original power. So it will be good to, to get a little bit of that feel of the original series with, with, with Tommy back. And to hop on that, everything that we have seen has been small, tiny connections back to it. Like mm-hmm. we did see Tommy, but he was only there for an episode. We did right. see two bit, but he was in there for like maybe two episodes so it wasn't like it was locked up all season one so you know Mm -hmm. yeah so we'll see how it works out after power book four though i'm wondering how they're going to do it so i'm assuming maybe another season of raising canaan i think that's already been wasn't tate supposed to get one or did they just roll tate's story into into Mm -hmm. ghost i think tate's is still happening but it's not happening until later if i'm not mistaken I think. Don't quote me okay. on that, though. Um, okay. But I think his is, his is still going to happen at some point. Um, but Raising Canaan, I think, is already filmed, if I'm not mistaken, or they're wrapping up filming for that one. So I would think that might be next. And then I would think maybe BMF Season 2, which we didn't review BMF Season 1, but great season, another season that I'm looking forward to in this. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just that it, it, it's more of a, a, a true story. Like when I when I get these the biopics, I, I don't I don't know. I don't know what it is about BMF that's just not I don't want to say it's not as appealing as as power because power has its has its flaws. For some reason it just hasn't drawn me in. Like I, I feel like I can only take so much of the Coke dealer vibe or energy. You know, I can only take so much of it as a time at a time. Like I, I don't watch uh, a snowfall at the same time that I'm watching mine. I don't watch Power at the same time that I'm watching Snowfall. You know, it, 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 you get it in, in flows, and as long as the writing is great, it's fine. I try not to flood myself with too much of it, though, because at some point it just kind of becomes very repetitive. And now I'm judging it from a standpoint of, well, damn, I got three damn drug shows. They all pretty much telling the same story. But 
you know, I'm looking for little nuances and it's just, it's not the same. I kind of have to give myself, all right, this is my drug show for this season. This is my, 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 my genre film show. This is my drama series. This is my comedy. Cause if I start judging them all together, then it gets very nitpicky. You know what I mean? For sure. I can see I that. Would hate, I would hate to do that with a show that we, we review on a weekly basis. I, I feel like mm-hmm. I get enough nitpicky on, on, on power as it is. So BMF sure. is probably one of those things that I'll probably be in in a weekend just to say that I've seen it. Yeah. I don't know if it if it's up there with power and snowfall necessarily, but still an interesting enough show to 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 watch. It's kind of up there. I I'll, I'll vouch for it a little bit. It's <laughs> okay. It's I mean, you would good. have to cuz it's pretty good. I'm okay. just throwing that out there. Let's let's just say I'm anticipating season 2 when it comes out this year. Sure. For sure. For sure. From there, uh, we could probably get into Disney Plus. Uh, obviously, there's some some Marvel titles, but probably the most thing I'm most anticipating is the Proud Family reboot. Mm. Proud Man. Family, louder and prouder. I'm looking for that. I was looking at a uh, a Twitter post the other day of the Proud Family cast and the guest stars that came I saw on that. there. I saw Dog. That such an impressive list of actors, right? Like the fact that they were able, it it was kind of like Black Panther-esque before Black Panther, right? Like it Mm -hmm. was, how how did you get this many black people in the same room at Disney? Who let you do this? Who let it slide? (laughs) Just the main cast alone was like star studded. Tommy Davis Jr., uh, something Jay Parker, the the wife. I can't think of her name right now. Um, uh, Paul. Is it Paula J. Parker? I want to say it's Paula something. They had Ari Spears playing Wizard Kelly, mm-hmm. Orlando Brown before he lost his damn mind, <laughs> Carlos Mencia, Kyla Pratt, it, it, Kyla Pratt, obviously. Cedric right? the like, Entertainer was said was in there. Steve Harvey was the credit card. Yeah, it was just a, a lot. lot. It, it was a lot. So if they keep that energy, I'm here for it all. I'm here for it all, man. Um, definitely Proud Family, one of the 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 nostalgia chords for sure. Uh, back, going back to the childhood, I, I I can't think of another cartoon. Proud Family, Cousin Skeeter, mm-hmm. Kenan and Kale, all of that, like that. Those were the black television shows. Oh, for we sure. We didn't have we didn't have all of this 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 high budget drama that, that they gave us every <laughs> five years. Now it's just like that was your black TV. Was UPN, oh, sure. Proud Family, and the, the select few shows on Nickelodeon. That yep. was it. So, oh. yeah, man, I'm, I'm excited about Proud Family for sure. Are they yeah. bringing back the original voices? Do you know? Kyla Pratt will be there. Tommy Davidson will be there. I think most, most of them are coming Most back. of them? Sugar That's Mama dope. is coming back. Yeah. That's dope. That's mm-hmm. dope. Yeah. So, yeah, definitely excited for that. And then, obviously, there's a, a few Marvel titles coming. I don't know if you're uh, super excited about She-Hulk. Miss Marvel, Moon Knight. I know you said you were uh, happy about Secret Invasion. Secret Invasion is probably going to be the one I pay the most attention to. I, I don't read a lot of She-Hulk or Kamala Khan, you know, Miss Marvel. So I don't, I don't know too much about their characters. The one thing that'll probably be interesting about uh, Jennifer Walters, She-Hulk, is that she's a lawyer. We saw in Spider-Man No Way Home that Matt Murdock was representing Peter Parker, but not Happy Hogan. Mm-hmm. Happy Hogan's going to need some legal advice as we're seeing how, you know, it left off at the end of No Way Home. So anybody got a lawyer? Anywhere in the MCU. Anybody got a lawyer in the MCU? I will be very disappointed if Jennifer Walters is not Happy Hogan's lawyer. If it's anyone else, it will not make sense. Okay, sorry, Matt Murdock or Jennifer Walters. Probably going to be Jennifer Walters, though. I can see that being her main plug-in into the into the MCU um, that's already established. With Kamala Khan, very popular character. I would watch out for that series if for nothing else, knowing that she's going to be in um, Multiverse of Madness, I believe it is, with, with Doctor Strange and Wanda. So... Definitely something to look out there because I, I know one of the criticisms I've been having of the, of the TV show so far is that they're not very interconnected. Um, Hawkeye, one of the I just finished that this weekend. That was probably one of the better ones for me. That was probably the first one that started tying threads to other existing MCU films directly. 
Like, hey, here's okay. some more of that stuff that we've introduced to you in this phase, not not the blip, not from you know the last five to ten years of the Infinity Saga. I'm, I'm just kind of starting to wear on me, guys. Let's start moving forward. Let's start moving past the blip. COVID obviously had a lot to do with that, but Secret Invasion is the one. Secret Invasion star on my boy Samuel Jackson. How did Sword start? Why are you in space? Why are you using scrolls? to represent you on earth are you using scrolls to represent you on earth because all we know is that talos and old girl showed up in no way home we don't we don't know we we assume i think that is at the behest of nick fury mm -hmm. what, if, what if it's not what if they decided what if nick fury took the scrolls on the sword ship out in the space and they decided hmm, this seems pretty important here what if we just took all this shit over and then start sending people back to earth Right, Secret Invasion, uh, based off of a comic book run where the scrolls, not necessarily the scrolls that we've seen in the MCU because that's a, a travesty, but uh, how they are known in the comic books are a shape-shifting, infiltrating race of aliens that uh, cripple governments, they destabilize nations. Uh, 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 that, that's what they do, right? Using their shape-shifting abilities. I want to see that fleshed out in Secret Invasion. Uh, that That's if you're going to do this kind of show with that title, I'm thinking that's where we're going. I just hope that they don't get too smart with it. It seems like the way that Marvel is on right now is beat the beat the theory guys. And in playing that game, I feel like you end up not doing things just for the sake of not doing them. Oh, well, this is what everybody thinks we're going to do. So we're not going to do that. We're going to do this. And, and so when you couple that, with their 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 compulsion really their obsession with shoving exposition down your throat it could potentially ruin the series for me but okay. it's also the one i'm most excited for out of out of the slate that's coming out in 2022 wish you know that wakanda forever was coming out this year it, it would go a long way in setting the stage for a uh, a very highly anticipated sequel but you know, obviously, they didn't choose to go that way, and they're you know going about it the way that they feel best, I guess. But I guess from the current slate of Marvel films that we actually do have premiering in 2022, for me, it's Secret Invasion for sure. Well, definitely can't wait to see uh Sam Jackson on our screen week in and week out, so that'll be dope. Oh, yeah. Uh, HBO Max has something that I think you'll be interested in it's the Showtime Lakers series that they're coming out with. I am super hype about that. I'm very it looks hype really about good. that. It, looks it does really look good really good, right? Giving us a not so clean cut idea of, of, of some of these, these dynamics, right? Like we've always heard, uh, or, or at least within the last 15 years or so, Irvin Magic Johnson and Jeannie Buss talk about each other as being brother and sister. I would like to see how that relationship actually fleshed out. Is it some stuff that we don't know? Let's see. Dr. Buss, right? They all, everybody speaks so highly about Dr. Buss. It, 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 it's, it's, it's crazy because you don't, you don't even Mark Cuban. These NBA players, they talk well about you while they're playing. They don't usually walk off and have glowing things to say about you, right? Like it, it's not that many owners that get universally praised by almost all the players that played for them. Kobe, Shaq, Derek Fisher, Lamar Odom, Robert Ory, Rick Fox, Magic Johnson, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, James Worthy, uh, Michael Cooper, Jerry West. When you hear them talk about Jerry, uh, the Dr. Buss, it's like they're, they're talking about a superhero. They're talking about a guy who was larger than life. That's a character I would like to see see fleshed out. Now, the dude that's playing Jerry Buss, I I I I, I loved him in Step Brothers, loved him in the Dewey Cox story. The guy's hilarious. I worry about the the tone being a little too comedic, right? Because I, I don't want it to turn into a joke. I don't want it to turn into a spoof. I want to know what the Showtime Lakers were like. So I'm, he does, I'm giving him a mission. Go ahead. John C. Riley does have serious roles, though. Okay. I haven't seen him never, in a lot. I was gonna say I've never personally <laughs> like, seen him, but I know he has actual serious roles. So the most serious, 
the most serious, like the absolute most lack of comedy role he was in, I think was in Guardians of the Galaxy when he was part of the Nova Corps because he was a pretty serious guy. Even, even in that, those Guardians of the Galaxy, it was comedy all through the movie. There was another movie that he did with Jonah Hill and uh, uh, an Aunt May, the, the chick that plays Aunt May from, from, no Way, or from Spider-Man franchise. And um, I guess he was trying to date his mom and Jonah Hill was trying to get in the middle of it. It was real weird. He still lived at home with his mom. So it was like, it was like satirical comedy. It wasn't like slapstick sketch comedy kind of the stuff that he's used to with will ferrell don't get me wrong he's, it was he's, like he's serious. a funny guy but like i think he has done serious roles so from what i've seen in this it kind of came off a little comedic and i think will ferrell is actually behind the lakers series. jesus christ he, he's but, producing it is he the producer but will ferrell and his partner are also behind secession he is behind succession you're right you're right you're right succession is awesome with a, with a light comedic tone that seems to go all the way through. So moving on to Netflix, uh, we've got an interesting series that I want to see, uh, which is, I, I think it's supposed to be kind of like Narcos for Griselda, Griselda Blanco. Mm-hmm. That's so interesting. I, I kind of want to see what that's going to, what that's going to be like. Are we basically going to redo Cocaine Cowboys part one, two, <coughs> and three? As, yeah, as that- kind of how like Narcos was, only we're going to do it reenacting instead of a documentary. I was going to say, I would have to think that it would be like a reenactment of what actually happened throughout all that mm-hmm. with actual actors. Which which would kind of give it away from me. You know, like I want somebody to try and do El Chapo's story. Like I, I thought for sure we'd be looking at a new season of Narcos from centered around El Chapo, especially how the last season of Narcos, Mexico just ended. Like, easy. Just just pour the money. Just, you want the money? Just do it. Just do the thing. Definitely want to see an El Chapo series, for sure. Like, come on, man. Like, not, and not the, the cheap, low-budget one that's currently on Netflix. Like, let the cast... There's one on early. Netflix already? Yes, bro. And it's not. It's called Chapo, and it's not great. It's, it's yeah. clearly not the same team that's doing Narcos. Let, the fact let, that I let haven't heard about it off. lets me know. The like, fact damn, that I heard been... one thing about it. Yeah, I mean, who knows? But that it, very long saga, though. You can get at least four or five seasons out of El Chapo's story alone. Alone. Easily. Man, broke out of prison three times, got caught, thrown back <laughs> in, and then his wife got arrested. <laughs> Finally, from Netflix, we have Ozark Season 4 Part 1. I guess they're splitting it into two different parts. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I don't know if they're giving us part two later in the year or if they're doing it next year. Who knows? But Ozark season four, part one is coming in a couple weeks, which means I have a couple weeks to prepare. One one project I would never have or have any reservations about. Well, I guess I don't have to have reservations about very much going further because it's ending. But I've never, never had any type of skepticism or um or worries about what ozark was going to be the new season of ozark <laughs> that story has been great from the inception from jump it has right. been a a constantly progressing and flowing story um and it and it's not i think they know when to end right it's, it's hard to find to the good spot to stop right ask ask uh you know got Ask them. It's hard to find a good place to spot to stop. Um, Jason Bateman, man, that guy. He, he, I think he he's one of those guys that is just like elite Hollywood. Like he's good behind the camera. He's good in front of the camera. He can do multiple genres. He's, so he's great in comedy. Yeah, like that guy is good. He's good. He 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 reminds me of a uh, uh, Issa Rae. Is, is one of those who's multi-talented. Clint Eastwood is a guy like that. Immediately. Holly Berry. Easter egg. Holly Berry. <laughs> I liked Bruce. It was all right. I didn't. I you didn't, didn't like it? No. I thought it was cool. I, I, now, I am a little disappointed that she finally got her own, right? Like, they gave her control of how to tell this story. And somehow she still wrote Finding Isaiah. How that happened, 
because I've always <laughs> blamed that on directors, right? Like, how do y'all keep making these fucking movies with Holly Berry being a shitty ass mom? Like, I'm, 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 I'm tired of that, right? But then she yep. get her own shot and she ain't and does the same else exact thing. But, nice but to be fair, the little ass kid wasn't saying a damn thing. That got annoying after a while, bro. I thought I thought he would have broke, a, a lot earlier in the movie than the end of the fucking movie, bro. So definitely can't get out of here before mentioning uh, two of, of my most anticipated that personally, that's, that's on my queue. Um, both HBO Max products. First one is going to be House of the Dragon, the prequel to Game of Thrones. This production has a lot to make up for. The last two seasons of Game of Thrones were absolute hogwash. Rubbish. Oh, no. Bloody shit shite <laughs> as the london blokes would say bloody shite uh it was it was pretty fucking bad so redo that shit right we're gonna set ourselves back about a thousand years we're gonna go back to a time where you know the dragons are here there's no we're not we're not playing the oh no magic is gone from the world then oh my god the nearest storm warm walks into a tent full of fire and walks out with three, you know, living dragons from petrified eggs. No, we have actual living, breathing beasts that they are breeding, House Targaryen. Um, we're going to be able to see a lot of the older characters that they mentioned as like, you know, fables or, or just kind of just like old tales that you tell kids, right? We're going to see those characters in That's this. Cool. Um, yeah, so so I think that's going to be dope. Plus, I think the main thing that hurt them in those last two seasons is that they ran out of source material because George R. R. Martin had written the, the last book or, or the last two books, I don't think, uh, by that time, by the time that they were shooting. So they were basically just shooting the shit off of their own. They were freestyling it. Yeah, they were freestyling it. So um, with this, at least they have a nice long section of source material to go on. Honestly, I hate to say it. I think that's why they chose to go the prequel route, prequel route as opposed to adding on to this story, uh, to the to the to the main Game of Thrones story. I think if they ever do come back to it, it will be years down the road. They're gonna give that a nice long breath. They're gonna give that one a nice long breath before they ever revisit that storyline. But I'm definitely excited about that. And then the second one, um, is a comedy, Danny McBride and Righteous Gemstones. Dog, hands down, one of the funniest TV shows, period. Here's period. the only reason I didn't say that. I haven't watched season one, but mm-hmm. I've seen um, Eastbound and Down, and I've seen Vice Principals. So I need to see that one as well. Vice that- Principals is hilarious. <laughs> Vice Principals is hilarious. <laughs> Have you ever seen Arizona? Mm-mm. With Danny McBride, Mm-mm. it's uh, about the it's it's about a realtor out in Arizona in some dying suburb, and like this dude, <laughs> it's Danny McBride, but like he like, I think he accidentally kills a man or something like that while the realtor is there, and then like <laughs> his ex wife shows up and he ties her up, accidentally kills her too. Now he got to kill the realtor, so he's chasing her around this suburb, and like it's 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 nuts. You got to see it. It's funny. Is it a movie. Yes, it's oh, called Arizona. That's probably why I haven't seen it. Yeah, yeah no, no he, he ends up playing basically the same person in each role that he plays. But it's just slight nuance, kind of like right? It's like it's yeah. something different because yeah. like Danny McBride from Eastbound and Down is not Danny McBride from from Righteous Gemstones, but there's definitely a through line there. <laughs> there's definitely a through line there. Like he's still just an arrogant asshole. Yeah, that's just hilarious throughout the whole thing. Yes, but it—I don't know. It just works every single time. So no. How did how did Danny McBride end up being so much funnier than James Franco and Seth Rogen? How did that happen? Was it always like that? It wasn't like that in Pineapple Express. He was just kind of like he had some good but moments, he, but it wasn't like that. He wasn't funnier but, than Seth Rogen. He's no, no, definitely sure. funnier than Seth Rogen at this point. But he was funny. He was hilarious in Tropic Thunder. Even he though was he was very only, funny in Tropic Thunder, he was only in Tropic Thunder for like two seasons. Lip, limited screen time, but he, he did what he needed to do. Same thing in Pineapple Express. 
I'm just saying, like, how did he become so much more insanely funnier than Rogan and Franco? Rogan and Franco were gold in Pineapple Express. One of my funniest, it's one of my favorite movies. But mm. damn, Danny McBride is a man that that guy can act. Give us your most anticipated shows, movies, anything you got coming up here in 2022. Give us in the comments below. And make sure you check out our playlist full of uh, power recaps. Uh, that's the latest show that we're actually doing episodes for. So make sure you check that out and make sure you subscribe.